Today I want to talk about something different. I've always wanted to share my game stories. I have more than 12 years of tabletop experience, so I have a lot of them. Now obviously I can't share long campaigns or anything like that because this is an optimization channel. So instead this will be a short story of something I experienced practically at a table. And if you really like this story, I'll tell more stories in the future. Welcome to Pack Tactics. We're going Going back to 2011. The system we were playing at the time was Pathfinder 1. Ah, ah, don't click off. This can happen in 5e2. I was a super noob back then, and I was playing a rogue halfling named Fritz. He was a grave robber and a thief. If I tell more stories in the future, you'll probably hear more about this character. Now, I don't remember what the other players were, but I believe we were six people in total. I still have contact with half of them. All of us were mostly new, including the DM. In this story, we were level three. The session started, we went to a tavern to meet a paladin who had a job for us. All the party members were bandits, so we didn't mind breaking the law, and the paladin knew that. She needed us to break into a poisoner's shop and look around for clues for cult activity. And if we found anything, then we would have to kill everyone and gather all the evidence for her. Now, the reason why she didn't do the job herself was because of her oath or something. I don't know. The important detail you need to know here was she was both rich, had magic items, and clearly an adventurer who was staying at the tavern. She had been there for a long time too, actually. Anyways, we did our job, we killed everyone, session ended. The next session, we meet up with the paladin and got paid well. She leaves immediately, and throughout the remainder of the session, we had downtime. Players leave except for me. Remember, she had a room in the tavern and was staying there, so I decided to break into her room alone. The reason why I did this was for multiple reasons. One, I didn't like her. Two, I wanted wanted extra gold and magic items. I lockpick the door, it opens, and I go in. Now, in the room, there's a wardrobe, a carpet, nightstand, bed, and a chest right in front of the bed. I walk up to the chest, fling it open, and die instantly. <laughs> Kobold, what happened? The chest was a mimic. It got a critical success and killed me instantly. Oh no! DM wouldn't even let you try to get away? Everything in the room was a mimic. If the chest didn't get me, the carpet would. What happened then? <laughs> well, of course everyone laughed. The lesson the DM wanted to teach me was to never split from the party. Now, of course, I was very upset when this happened. I thought it was unfair and stupid. Why does this paladin have a room full of mimics in a tavern? Does she sleep in the mimic bed? Now, keep in mind, friends, this was 12 years ago. We're not gonna blame anyone. This is just what happened. And Anyways, this is actually not the end of the story. Wait, what? I leave the table to make another character. The players had their downtime, and then Eldritch Abominations appear. This video is sponsored by Out of the Maw. It's a big supplement book all about aberrations for 5e. And it's all designed around an entity from beyond the stars known as the Hungering Maw. 23 new aberrations and 5 new cultists, all of which have very detailed descriptions. Fantastic for small campaigns and especially one-shot ideas. 25 new spells, including including a very special 10th level spell. New mechanics called Twisted Tables. It corrupts and mutates the world into a darker place. 32 new magic items, including special items called Arsenal of the Mossborn. These are extremely powerful but corrupt weapons. You can obtain them and purify them. A new warlock subclass, the ever-changing one. These guys are aliens who alter their body and adapt to their surroundings. There's also fun evocations to play with too. And lastly, two new adventures, one for low level and one for high level play. Almost everything has been handcrafted and playtested in weekly games for years. Fun fact about that, and this is amazing by the way. All of this came from a normal homebrew game, but the players and the DM are both so immersed into their game that they all decided to band together to make their world into a supplement for you to experience. This is a passion project by the whole table. I've never heard of something like this before. Usually 
usually with projects like this, it's just a single DM. But this is everyone involved, which is nuts. That table's optimizing. I highly recommend you check out their Kickstarter. This is their first project, and I really want to see these guys succeed. Link in the description. Back to the story. So, the game ends early after downtime. I believe the very next day we had a session again. I rolled up a half-orc wizard. I don't remember his name. But anyways, we got a new job and, uh... What happened when the lady found your body? I don't remember. Anyways, new job. The quest giver tells us to investigate a mansion. People have gone inside and never come out. And so we go to the mansion place. Now, here's where things get silly again. I remember I said before we go into the mansion, we should look around the outside of the mansion and look through the windows. I then proceeded without the player's say at all. That was a huge mistake. The player who had the most experience in Pathfinder was the leader of our group. Let's call him the boss. He decided to ignore that idea and go into the mansion anyways. All the other players followed him, leaving me outside alone. Now, at the time, I didn't think this was too big of a deal. The quest giver said things happen inside the mansion, not outside. I turn the corner around the building and suddenly I fall through the grass and have to roll initiative alone. <laughs> oh no! I've only seen this creature once ever, and I still to this they don't know what it was. It was some sort of aberration. I don't even know if this was an official monster. It was an invisible pit monster. I fell 10 feet down its mouth. Here's the crazy part. The inside of its mouth is actually another plane of existence. It's a pocket dimension full of teeth. It was biting me. When I yelled out to the party, they didn't hear anything. I was in another dimension, and remember, I was 10 feet down the pit. This is probably the most creative monster I've ever seen. Did you climb or teleport out? Falling 10 feet, I ended up prone. Hard climb check, of course, and I was a wizard. This was Pathfinder, so you wouldn't get something like Misty Step that soon. Or at least that's what I remember. I might be wrong. Did you die again? <laughs> Yes, I did die again. The DM told me the same thing as before. Don't split from the party. The boss that ignored me told me he ignored what I said because his character didn't trust me. Remember what I said in my metagaming video? This was the first time I experienced this nonsense. But fine, let's look at it from his perspective. A random half-orc just joined the party 30 minutes ago and told everyone to look around without the group's say. The boss didn't like that. It sounded like an order. I didn't mean to do that. I made an assumption they would agree, and it cost me my character's life. What about the other players? They told me they weren't paying attention, but they sided with the boss because that's what made sense. I do think they're wrong, but whatever. End of story. Cobalt! You're a noob! <laughs> yeah, I was quite a noob 12 years ago. I was a teenager too. The lesson I learned in that campaign was don't split from the party, even if you're a rogue stealthing alone. And I've kind of stuck to it. Now, a lot of you will probably argue that's the wrong way to teach that lesson, and I will agree with you. I also learned that you should accept new player characters instead of leaving them because you don't trust them. Ugh. Did you keep playing? Yeah, of course I did. It was fun. <laughs> Anyways, end of video. Check out Out of the Maw. Link in the description and comments. And if you like what you see, they hope to earn your support just as I hope to earn your subscription. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.